Question 11 says, one of the most efficient engines ever built is a coal-fired steam turbine engine in the Ohio Valley, driving an electric generator as it operates between 1,870 degrees Celsius and 430 degrees Celsius. What is its maximum theoretical efficiency? And B, its actual efficiency is 42%. How much mechanical power does the engine deliver if it absorbs 1.8 times 10 to the fifth joules of energy each second from the hot reservoir? So maximum theoretical efficiency, if you remember, uh, we get the most uh, efficiency whenever the, the change of internal energy is equal to zero. And so basically, whenever um, the, the engine goes from here, it goes from like a low energy to a high energy, and then go back to a low energy, then goes back to a high energy, back to a low energy. Wherever its starting and stopping points are, are the exact same. So the amount of energy that it goes in and goes out is the exact same. So the change of, of internal energy is equal to zero when the energy, whenever the engine is running at its maximum theoretical efficiency. So we can set up the equation for the first law of thermodynamics. Uh, the change of internal energy is equal to the energy transferred by heat plus the work done on the, on the engine. And since uh, the delta U is equal to zero, we can say that zero equals Q plus W, and then we can move uh, W to the other side, so we would say uh, negative work done on the engine is equal to the change of, uh, the change of energy from heat. So in a perfect engine, we would have a hot reservoir and we would have a, a cold reservoir. And so what we would get is we would get the hot reservoir would send heat over to the cold, and then the cold would send heat back over to the hot. But the hot reservoir sometimes is going to lose a little bit of heat to the environment. And so the, the net change, uh, so if we say the, the net uh, transfer of energy by heat is equal to the transfer of the hot reservoir minus the transfer of the cold, because the transfer of the cold reservoir is transferring uh, the energy back. That's if I understand this right. I could be mis I'm just going to say this, I could be misunderstanding this. Um, I'm, I'm taking this class online, so uh, there's a good chance I'm misunderstanding it because I'm getting it all from the book. But if, if I understand this right, then what we have is the hot reservoir transfers it into the cold reservoir, and the cold reservoir transfers it back. So in the end, uh, the transfer of heat is, the, the total transfer of heat is going to be um, the, the hot reservoir minus the cold reservoir. Because everything from the cold reservoir we're saying is coming back. And so if it all comes back, then the only thing we really transferred out is what we transferred minus what got sent back. And so we could set up an equation to say that the negative work done on the engine is equal to the, uh, the absolute value of the transfer of heat from the hot reservoir minus the transfer of energy by heat from the cold reservoir. And the only reason I say that is because there's two ways to calculate the efficiency of an engine. So the efficiency of an engine, we're saying how much, how much work can I get out of this um, given the amount of energy that I put in. I'm not putting in any internal energy because the, the internal energy is equal to, the change of internal energy is equal to zero. So the internal energy stays the same. So I'm looking at uh, basically just the energy transferred by heat. How, so how much, of, how much of that is getting turned into work? If all of it gets turned into work, then you would have a 1 over 1. You would have an efficiency equal to 1 or 100%. But the other way to write that equation is, and, and so this is, the, the W is the work on the, the work of the engine on the environment. So, and it's equal to negative of the work done on the engine. So whenever I said that in the previous equation, negative W is equal to, to, um, to the net Q. So this net Q is also equal to the positive of the work done by the engine on the environment. And this would be when the change of internal energy is actually at zero, you would be getting 100% efficiency. And so the other way to calculate the efficiency is because we can say that the work is equal to this Q net. So we could say that the work is this, uh, the, the transfer of heat from the hot reservoir minus the transfer of heat from the cold reservoir. And since, because uh, the hot reservoir transfer of heat could be negative or positive, we want to set it up with absolute value. And so we can divide that by 
the transfer of heat from the hot reservoir. And because this is equal to, the top is equal to work, so we, we can set up the equation like, like this. And so the one thing you'll notice is that these terms right here are the same, and so you could set it up as Q of H over, over Q of H minus QC over QH, and this would stay in absolute values, and these would turn into the number 1. So you'd say that efficiency is equal to 1 minus the cold reservoir divided by the hot reservoir, the absolute value of those two. Now we can go a step further. Because energy is equal to 1 minus the energy transferred by heat from the cold reservoir over the energy transferred by heat from the hot reservoir, we don't know how much energy was transferred by heat, but we do know the change of temperature. And so um, from studying the Carnot engine, uh, the textbook gives us this equation. It gives us the absolute value of, of the QC over the absolute value of QH is equal to the temperature of the cold reservoir divided by the temperature of the hot reservoir. So we can actually take this part and substitute it in right here. We would get uh, the efficiency is equal to 1 minus the temperature of the cold reservoir over the temperature of the hot reservoir. So we, uh, we have um, our the temperatures we're given are in Celsius, so we just need to change them. So the temperature of the cold reservoir is equal to 430 degrees Celsius, and that is equal to 703.15 Kelvin. So I just added 273.15 to that. And the temperature of the hot reservoir, it tells us, is 1,870 degrees Celsius, which is equal to... 2,143.15 Kelvin. And so we can say that our efficiency is equal to 1 minus 703 divided by 2143. So our efficiency is equal to 1 minus 0 0.328092. So the efficiency is 0 0.671908. And then part B goes a step further. It tells us that, yes, the, the theoretical maximum yield might be 67.19%, but its actual efficiency, so it's not running at maximum efficiency. It's saying it's running at below its maximum theoretical efficiency. Its actual efficiency is 42%. And it says, how much mechanical power does the engine deliver if it absorbs 1.8 times 10 to the fifth joules of energy each second from the hot reservoir? So it tells us off the bat what Q of H is. Q of H is 1.8 times 10 to the fifth joules. So we have to set up our efficiency equation. Efficiency is equal to, and we have to pick which one we want. It asks us how much mechanical power. So it wants to know basically the work divided by seconds. So we want to solve for work. And so work over uh, Q of H is equal to the efficiency. The mistake you can make is by saying that efficiency is equal to 1 minus the work over Q of H. If you do that, you're going to get the wrong answer because it's you only do the 1 minus whenever you're using temperature or whenever you're using Q of H, the absolute value, minus Q of C, absolute value, over Q of H. And that, that Q of H cancels out and turns into a 1 minus QC over QH. So that's where the 1 comes from. You don't use the 1 whenever you're dealing with just work. But we need to solve this equation for work. So what we can do is simply multiply QH to the other side. So the efficiency times Q of H should equal the work done. And really, if you wanted to be technical, we would say the, the efficiency per second is equal to the work per second divided by Q of H per second because it tells us that Q of H every second. But we don't need that because the, the S's are canceling out in our equation. And so the, the efficiency it told us was, was 0 0.42 and Q of H, so we multiply that by 1.8 times 10 to the fifth. And it'll tell us that we are getting 75,600 uh, 7, joules per second. And the last part of this is it wants the it wants the answers in kilowatts. So joules 
joules per second is equal to watts. And so we got to divide our answer by 1,000 to get the kilowatts. So 75.6 75 kilowatts. Now, just for those interested, that engine at the beginning of this video was actually an engine built in 2006 by an Australian engineer, and it runs completely on air power. Um, probably more efficient than this coal-fired steam engine, but I don't know that for sure.